How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jeff Benjamin with I Download Blog. This is Let's Talk Jailbreak episode number 23. We have a nice show planned for you guys. I have my co-host Cody Lee on the line. What's up, Cody? Not much. What's up, Jeff? Not a lot. I got a, I got a lot going on, but not a lot at the same time. It's kind of weird. You'll have to explain. <laughs> well, there's not a lot of excitement right now, but um, I do have a lot going on with regard to like computers and stuff like that. Just getting my office kind of reconfigured. Okay. Yeah, that's right. You're telling me you got a new computer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> once you exp- once you explain this. I, I well, a little backstory. I I have a um a 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. Right. That is like the literal probably second to the most powerful one you can get. I mean, it's just it has all the whistles, all the bells. Super expensive. But the thing is, um, it's known to have issues. Like it's, this laptop has uh, logic board issues. Okay. And I've just been reading about this uh, on you know the Apple message boards. I've actually experienced it myself. Like what? Probably like six six months ago, my logic board just completely like it. It just stopped working. So I had to take it in and get it fixed. It was like a seven hundred dollar fix or something like that, but it was free because I was under warranty. Right, and so you're coming up to the end of your one year warranty. Exactly. Um, okay. At the end of this month, I will be out of warranty. So I have a decision to make. Right. I can either pay pay three hundred forty nine dollars for Apple Care for another two years, or I can sell this laptop and um, get some of my money back. And just use this new 11-inch Haswell MacBook Air. Okay. For everything. Now, what are the specs on your Haswell, on your new Haswell? It's a Best Buy model. So it's like, you know, it's four gigabytes of RAM. Yeah. It's a 128 gig um, solid state drive. But the battery life is incredible. <laughs> this thing okay. Is, I was going to ask you new. about that. Is it, uh, what is it on the 11-inch model? Uh, it says nine hours. Okay. So, you know, that's pretty significant uh, upgrade over the previous model. I think the previous one was like five hours, and you would struggle to just get that. Right. And I yeah. know the in the 13 inch, isn't that one rated at like 11 hours or 12 like hours? 12, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but I love this 11, 11. I've had an 11 before, but it was just, it was like the first 11. It was terrible. Right. As far as like speed. and But this one is actually pretty solid. I haven't had... Like I can actually export videos and and do some. I mean, I'm obviously it takes a little while longer than it does on the Retina. Well, it takes a lot longer, but um, I think I can live with that. Really? Although I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm. Th- I'm trying to debate whether or not because I have a Thunderbolt display. Right. So that makes you know it really doesn't matter um, what type of computer I have as long as I have Thunderbolt, I'm good. Um. Because you have the large display, you have FireWire inputs, you have all the inputs that are there. So you just literally plug in your Thunderbolt, you know, jack, and you're good. Right. It's almost like just having a normal desktop, but it is slower. And, I was gonna uh, say, as much stuff as you do exporting video, and I know you're even recording this podcast right now, and you'll have to cut and edit it later. You, you're cool. <laughs> you're, you're cool with that that speed difference. Ah. <sighs> Well, I'm just thinking. I'm trying to weigh my options because it's either like, all right, pay three forty now, right? Keep keep the laptop, the Retina laptop, for another couple of years. And, you know, who's to say I won't have? Even though it'll be under warranty, you could have more problems. It's just I don't know. It's, it's hard to. What should I do? I don't know what to do. Well, you know, I've had. I think we talked about this on podcast before, but I've seen some like stutters in my computer and. You know, the, these first Retina models, it just seems like the screen was almost too much for everything else to handle. Um, sometimes my computer goes to sleep randomly. But uh, I've been thinking about doing something similar to what you did, you know, selling mine off and getting a new model. But I was going to wait and see if they did any new uh, MacBook Pros this fall. It doesn't sound like you can wait that long as far as like your warranty and stuff's concerned. But I was ho- yeah. I was hoping that we would see some new MacBooks maybe alongside new iPads in October. Because I know we right. saw new Macs last last year in October alongside the iPad Mini, so yeah, it's it's sort of just I'm kind of just weighing my options right now. Like I don't know, yeah, um, 
I'm I'm leaning towards. I already actually um, started like going into the process of cleaning the the retina. Right. Um. So I'm leaning towards getting rid of it, just because I don't really want to. You know, this thing is just. It's has a lot of issues that I've been reading about. So I'm kind of uh, maybe I better just go ahead and get rid of it while it still has warranty and while it still works. I got gotcha. you. Well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> But the 11 inch, I mean, I'm really, it's actually nice for editing for one reason. It's much quieter. Yeah. I so, bet. So, um, yeah, it's not, it doesn't sound like a spaceship is about to take off, um, like the Retina model. Yeah. So, that is one plus. But who knows? We'll see what happens next week. Maybe next week I'll have a Mac Pro. <laughs> Stay tuned. Know. Stay tuned, folks, <laughs> for Jeff's hardware dilemma. Yeah. So, um, that, that's new. What about you? What, how's your week? Um, well, my weekend, I guess it was pretty boring. Um, you know, preseason football's on, so I'm kind of excited about that. I'm excited for football season to start back up. And, uh, oh, we saw the new, we saw the new Elysium movie with Matt Damon. That kind of like sci-fi action thriller. I feel like every time you ask me what I did this weekend, I I always say a movie, but there's just not much. Well, you're the movie buff around here. Yeah, there's just not much to do up here in Oregon. We go, we go to the beach when it's sunny, but that doesn't happen very often. Well, you have your, uh, who, who is that, uh, Portland Trailblazers? They'll, they'll be playing. <laughs> I don't know about that. But uh, <laughs> no, the movie's good. Solid sci-fi thriller if you're into that kind of thing. And yeah, I think it was pretty popular this weekend. So go see it if you're interested. Interesting. Okay. So pretty uh, standard week for both of us, I guess. Well. <laughs> My crazy uh, computer issues. I guess that is standard movies. week, <laughs> <laughs> So what, what's new in the, as far as Apple is concerned? Oh, well, actually, it was a huge, it's been a huge week since we last talked um, as far as Apple news goes. Um, I want to say at the end of last week, no, it was probably on Saturday. Well, I guess that is the end of last week. Um, a report came out basically saying from All Things Digital, who, as you know, is owned by the uh, Wall Street Journal. Um, the report came out saying that Apple's iPhone event is going to be on September 10th. Now, right. if you've been in this business very long, you know that... Apple tends to leak stuff through the Wall Street Journal, through some of these other major publications, just to kind of control the conversation, if you will. And there's a lot of speculation that that's what happened. Apple, you know, Apple greenlighted somebody to tell all things digital that, hey, our event's coming up. Um, it's since been confirmed by Bloomberg. It's since been confirmed by, you know, Apple Insider, Jim, I always mess up his last name, Dalrymple of The right. Loop. Um, he's, he's, has a hundred percent track record. So anytime he adds his yep to something, it's pretty much a given. So right. it sounds like this September 10th event is really going to happen. It's on a Tuesday. Apple loves Tuesdays. So it looks like we're going to see our new iPhone or iPhones here in less than a month. That's really exciting. It is exciting. It, it seems like it's been forever since we've even had this conversation right or it's been forever since we've had an apple event right it's been since last october so there was no ipad that, it's event. been that long yeah there was no ipad event in may i guess there was wwdc in june but oh yeah i forgot about that it was not a uh obviously no products were other than i guess well, okay well i guess the new mac book airs the haswells and yeah. then the mac pro was shown off but you get what i'm saying yeah yeah so it's been it's a major drought yeah and uh an Apple product releases. Now, here comes the uh, deluge. Yeah, here comes the flood. Because it looks like, I mean, just from what we're hearing, it sounds like this is going to be a separate event than the iPad event. Apple's going to hold a separate one, maybe in October like it did last year, and talk about the new redesigned iPad 5 and the iPad mini. I mean, especially as big as this iPad redesign sounds like, you don't want to put it next to not only your new iPhone, but possibly a lower cost iPhone. It's hard to have them all share the spotlight at the same time. Right. So do you think both of the iPhones will be talked about at the September 10th event? Oh, that is the toughest thing in the world to predict, right? I mean, you want to say, we've seen the cases, we've seen the volume buttons, we've seen all this evidence, and uh, you want to say it's a given, but I mean, I'm still stung by that... Uh, what was it? The teardrop case of 2011 fiasco <laughs> where we literally for what was it? Months reported on this teardrop shaped iPhone that that was supposed to be the iPhone five. Right. right that. Right. And this was, and we this got the was 4S before, instead. Right, exactly. It was before the 4S even. So here we are all planning for this huge upgrade 
we're seeing all these cases. Manufacturers, I mean, they produced tens of thousands of cases, if not hundreds of thousands. And it ended up being the 4S looking exactly like the iPhone 4. And we all just kind of got bit by that. So I kind of have a chip on my shoulder from that. So it's hard for me to get excited even when there is this much evidence. But if I, I guess if I had to bet money on it, I would say it's happening. It's so just, iPhone 5S and iPhone 5C? 5, that's, that name still sounds weird to me, but I can't, I don't have a better argument against it, if that makes sense. I can't say iPhone Lite or iPhone Mini. I just can't see why Apple would indicate in the name that it's of lesser quality than the iPhone 5S. So I, I wouldn't, I don't see a problem, I guess, with iPhone 5 color other than it just sounds weird. <laughs> yeah. But I think the the handset looks cool. Like if you've seen the leaks, I mean, it's just got this real smooth back, nice rounded corners. Um, I know people really love Apple's high quality products, you know, when they use high quality materials like aluminum. Um, but plastic, I mean, it's way cheaper. If you're talking about getting a phone for a kid, this is going to be way more durable. Um, and it, I think it'll look really cool in all the different colors with iPhone, or iOS 7. I right, think that'll yeah. all go really well together and... If you price this thing around 300 bucks, I think it's a no-brainer for parents, for people on prepaid plans, for emerging markets. I think it's just this huge seller. Yeah, and I, I think it, all the signs are pointing towards this. I mean, think about iOS 7, how it has the uh, color. Uh, the API, you, yeah, the API yeah. that pulls the color of the handset. You're right. Right, and think about all the colors in iOS 7, period. I mean, it's just, it's vastly more uh, saturated with color than you know, previous versions of iOS. So I think everything is just kind of pointing towards, yeah, we're going to have a variety of different colors to choose from. Right. And I think that's cool. I think that's cool that they're branching out. And what a way to differentiate your two lines. This one's going to have a bunch of colors, but lesser features. This one's going to have maybe not as many color choices and more features. Yeah. So it's almost like a pro versus consumer line, but they're not saying that in exact words. Right. It's like the MacBook, well, they're all pro. Well, MacBook <laughs> Pro versus MacBook Air. Or even even remember that plastic MacBook that they yeah, had, the polycarbonate? The original MacBook. Yeah, it's kind of like that. That's what I look at it like. And a lot of people have likened the look of the iPhone 5C, so to speak, to that so older that, MacBook. I like that MacBook, MacBook. I thought it was cool. The plastic white one? Yeah. There was also black one, too. Wasn't the it? black one was sweet. The black one, I think, was like a matte black almost. Then. Or yeah, maybe, it was. Yeah, and it... I thought that looked cool, too. That's what I was saying. Uh, I think we talked about this on a previous podcast, but that's what I was saying. I would love to see that color come back for maybe the MacBook Pro line. Right. Yeah. So I just think everything is kind of headed that direction. One, um, yeah. One thing I'm still not sure of, though, because I'm a skeptic at heart, is this uh, fingerprint sensor. I know we've talked about this a lot, and we both really want it. And uh, actually, since we last talked, some new reports came out regarding it, but... Uh, I don't know. What's your take on this? Not final take, but what what do you think thus far? About the fingerprint about, sensor? About the fingerprint sensor in the iPhone 5S. I think it's definitely happening. I think it's definitely happening? I mean, what else have we heard as, as far as new features that's, for the iPhone? That's true. And, you know, even for S models, right? It's supposed to be the 5S. Even the S right. models typically have one big feature. At least four, one. The 4S with Siri... The 3GS was... Compass. Compass? Was the, yeah, Compass. I guess that was... I don't know if that was that big feature. Didn't it have a... It had a better camera than the 3G. Better like, camera. Couldn't it take video too, I think, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, so each one has like at least one major feature that says, hey, even you iPhone 5 guys or previous gen guys should still upgrade. And I think this year's could be the fingerprint sensor. Oh, yeah. And I think they're going to have some really cool stuff. Um, just demonstrations. I can already kind of see it, how it's going to play out right. demonstration wise, how it's going to be so much easier to, you know, unlock your device, keep it, keep it secured, but make it easy. Don't make it difficult on your uh, customers to keep their devices secure. The big thing here I'm worried about is durability. Um, I know we did a post last week, I believe uh, a biometric sensor expert weighed in on the whole thing and basically kind of cast doubt on, Apple's ability to keep these things functioning for more than a year or two. Um, these sensors, I guess, are just really sensitive to dust and things like that. And just between shoving these phones in your pocket and just all kinds of different things you'll be doing with your phone throughout the day, things you get on your hands, 
he made it sound like these things are just not going to last. And that's why other companies haven't been embedding sensors into their devices because they're just not real durable. But, you know, we've heard reports of it being covered with Sapphire. We've heard some different things that might help Apple differentiate its sensor from those who have tried in the past. Yeah, and that's what Apple is known for. They're known not for so much in, innovating with brand new ideas, but they're taking ideas that have existed before and they make them perfect or as close to perfect as possible. Boom. I think you just kind of hit it on the head, actually. I hadn't thought of it from that angle, but you're right. You're exactly right. The MP3 player was already out before the iPod. Um, right. And uh, there was touchscreen phones out before the iPhone, but they just take you know people that were struggling to make something good they come out and they make it great kind of deal. Yeah. So I think we're, we're definitely going to see a fingerprint sensor and I think it's going to work. I think they, they've cracked it, so to speak. Yeah, that'd be cool. I don't think, here's my prediction. I don't think it does a whole bunch of stuff right off the bat. I think this is just them kind of dipping their toe in the water, um, getting consumers used to it. Maybe it unlocks your phone. Maybe it controls activation. But uh, mobile payments and things like that, I think that'll come down the road. Yes, I think so too. Yeah, and I, I think haven't there been reports on that as well? Um, yeah, or something I saw. An, an, yeah, analysts calling for basically making a similar prediction, saying, that "Oh, they we are, know they are always right." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I would like to see sooner than later. I don't know if it'll happen at launch, but I'd like to see them eventually open that password sensor up to uh, developers, let them replace their passwords with it. That would be sweet. Yeah. That really would. Yeah. So lots to look forward to. Um, Lots to Man, look forward to, yeah. September 10th can't get here soon enough, <laughs> really. Now, we know we just had the iOS 7 Beta 5. Was that last Tuesday? That was last Tuesday. And it's weird because yeah. it feels like it was longer than that. Yeah, it does. I don't um, I don't think there was too too many features, too many new features in it. I think that's why it kind of escapes our memory a little bit or feels further away than it was. <laughs> it was very... Uh, the changes were subtle. Yeah, um, you did a subtle. you did a video on some of these. What were some of the, I guess the bigger changes? I'm doing air quotes, but you can't see it. Um, you know what? That's a good question. <laughs> um, I know it had a t- new Twitter icon. That's that's cool. <laughs> new Yahoo branding in the notification center. Um, oh, the big thing I think with the um, beta five was the new settings. Oh, icons. you're right. Yeah, that's and they, what it was, and it looks so much better if you haven't. It does. If you haven't seen it, it's. I mean, the icons literally went from all blue, kind of like outlined icons in the settings app, to all color filled in. I wish they'd kind of do that with the whole OS. <laughs> yeah, just kind of upgrade everything with a little more color and definition. Yeah, and the new power off slider, uh, of course, that new API change with the um, the install screen being the same color as your phone right that goes back to the the color iphones uh so not a lot of different (laughs) not a lot of different features there but um just a lot of subtle tweaks to make it um you know make it feel more complete i guess you know i will say that on my 4s this thing runs infinitely faster significantly faster than beta 4 did Really? So there's must have been some kind of huge, yeah, huge performance improvement because now it's just about like a one second lag when I double tap my home button to where and I see the the apps, you know, the full screen app switcher. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's it's a solid solid little release. Um, and I think I don't know how many more betas we're gonna see. What do you think? Um, well, let's see. If they stay on schedule, um, we'll see one next Monday. I don't think we see more than seven. I think we see seven, and then maybe, and then maybe a GM. So either they slow down, or we're going to see the most betas we've ever seen for a real, uh, iOS release. Yeah, and that would be appropriate considering how big of a change iOS seven is. From True. you know, this is the most radical change we've seen. That wouldn't be completely weird to see more betas than we've ever seen, as as big as the changes are. Right. So I don't right. know. I guess we can kind of shoot for around September tenth for, um when we see the final version of iOS 7 drop, maybe a little bit after that, obviously when the iPhones are actually released. Yeah. Maybe a week afterwards, some, something like that. Sure. Looking forward to it though, man. It's, it's a really exciting time. It's about time we got some excitement around here. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just with the new products. And then this is obviously the biggest update we've ever seen to iOS. So yeah, should be a big fall. 
Yeah. Now, now we have a lot of, I won't say a lot, but there are some jailbreak tweaks. There are some the news in the jailbreak front. Yeah. I yeah. think you did previews and updates. I think is what it was. Yeah. Um, one of the big ones last week was the lock bar pro. Right. And this is a, a tweak for iOS six that allows you to have a sort of a control center like toggles on your, uh, on your lock screen. You, did you check that out? Yeah, I did. And I wouldn't say sort of. I'd say this is the most dead ringer version of Control Center you'll find on iOS 6. I mean, the background is matches up 100%. It just doesn't have... What does it not have? It doesn't have some of the other features. But all the toggles yeah. are there. And it's customizable, isn't it? Uh, it's just it's just toggles, yeah. And you can rearrange the toggles and stuff. But uh, it's pretty basic. Yeah. Um. And granted, this is just a preview, but uh, for those of you who are expecting like full fledged control center, then you may be a little disappointed. Yeah. Uh, because this is only accessible f- number one from the lock screen. Oh, is it? Um, I guess I didn't yeah. know that. So you can only access this from the lock screen, at least in this version. I guess that makes um, sense. Lock bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, there's no like other features that you find in the um, control center, like music controls and stuff like that. It's just toggles mainly. Yeah, and that part's kind of a bummer because, you know, it seems like there's infinite choices for setting toggles. Right. Just yeah. infinite. Like, you could throw a rock in the city store and hit five of them. <laughs> yeah, right. but this is a solid preview. I mean, I, I think it definitely has a lot of potential, and I'm really interested to see what the, he does with the uh, with the release. Yes. Well, because like, like we said, this is it looks very much like iOS 7. For folks that don't end up updating to iOS 7 this fall because they're trying to save their jailbreak, this will probably be an, end up being one of those tools for how to rebuild iOS 7 on your phone without updating. What else do we have on the docket? I think we have uh, iReal SMS. Yeah, you previewed their... Don't, they have a new quick reply feature. Yeah, and it looks like iOS 7. <laughs> hmm. there's, a theme, <laughs> there's a theme going here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so iReal SMS was updated with a new uh, iOS 7-inspired quick reply. And I previewed it, and the video's on IDB. You can check it out. But it basically just gives you an iOS 7 style theme for you know quick reply. That's kind of I don't know. It's kind of ironic because iOS 7 doesn't have quick reply, <laughs> and that's probably <laughs> exactly. the most the most highly requested feature I hear is <laughs> right. I mean, Apple would just add quick reply to messages and uh, Facebook and some other things. It would be huge. Yeah, very ironic, actually. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. It's like, uh, this is kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm not an iReal SMS user. I'm not I, either. I'm, I've tried uh, Byte SMS a few times just under Sebastian's heavy recommendation. He swears by it. and I It's just, a good, Byte is a good app. I just can't, I can't stand the double, feeling like I have double messages. Even when it lets you hide the actual messages app, it still doesn't feel right. <laughs> So yeah, well, you definitely wouldn't like iReal SMS. <laughs> it's even more like kind of disjointed. Yeah, um, but I still need to review it because that that's not exactly fair. I haven't reviewed it. You know, I haven't spent you know hours like I've spent with Byte SMS. So I do plan on reviewing iReal SMS, and uh, I'll have that soon on IDB. So check for it. Any <laughs> idea when either of these pre when any of these these things are gonna drop? Well, Lock I think um, and... iReal SMS is already out. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, as far as Lockbar Pro. I don't know for sure. Okay. Uh, I would imagine soon. Yeah. But, Stay yeah. tuned to IDB if that's that's what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Now, Video Pain was was another big release. Yeah. Uh, and that's from Ryan Petrick, and it, it's that tweak that allows you to um, view your videos in a pop-up window so that you can, like, multitask and do other stuff while watching video. Yeah. It's really cool. Super but cool. But this was... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was saying super cool. Just adding that in because this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen the jailbreak community do in a little while. It is. Um, and now it works with uh, Netflix. Uh, I know there were some problems initially with the first release. It has some new features. It works with Netflix. It has a new settings panel. And actually, it was updated again. I haven't even got to cover the new, newest update. But uh, it's Ryan's on his, on his game, man. He stays updating all his tweaks. On a regular. To kind of give you an idea of how huge this is, um, you could be in your, you know, on your iPhone or your iPad. It's iPad compatible, correct? Yes. Okay. You could be on your iPhone or your iPad and 
Um, you could be watching, you know, maybe you're gearing up for Breaking Bad. Maybe you're watching Breaking Bad on Netflix. You could literally close the app, but continue watching the video in a little tiny screen. Continue watching whatever you're watching on Netflix as you compose emails, as you um, browse Twitter. I mean, the possibilities are in this. It really brings kind of true multitasking to iOS. And as you said, the latest version, it works great. Very stable. So are you a user? Um, I've tried it. I don't, I haven't worked it into my workflow yet. I've played around with it though, and I haven't downloaded this latest update, but, um, I will be, I think I will be, I'm kind of waiting. I don't know. I need to, my iPad mini is jailbroken and I need to use it more. I don't use my iPad enough, so I might try it on there right. and see if I yeah. use it more. It's a solid tweak though. I mean, it's, I would almost say it's a must have if you're a, you know, an avid video watcher on your iPad or your iPhone for that matter, and you're jailbroken, why not? I mean, where I could really see this being huge, I've kind of got my eye on this quote unquote redesigned iPad 5. Um, it's supposed to be thinner, it's supposed to be, you know, more powerful. I, when I had my full size iPad, I did a lot of work. I would write, I would browse art, I would do a lot of that stuff. The iPad mini has kind of become more of a media consumption device for me, but, uh, if I had, you know, something more powerful, something with a bigger screen, I would use it more for work. And then this this tweak would definitely come in handy. So ne next one is message renamer. And that was something we just literally posted probably an hour or so ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't even seen this yet. Yeah, this is a tweak. And this is really cool. It allows you to like, you know, when you have group conversations and messages. Yeah. Um, and it, it's everybody's name on there. And it's kind of confusing as to what what is this? You ever get that? Like, who is this? Like, why am I? It's just it's just just a mess. Yeah. And you have a, a lot of group conversations going on. It's this confusing you, when you have multiple users, yeah. Yes. This allows you to rename the conversation to something custom. Okay. So that you can I could say like if I was talking to you and Sebastian and Chris or, and Lori and uh Jim Get everybody one, <laughs> Yeah, get everybody on board. And one chat, that would be a mess. Like the heading of that the name of that that conversation would be like Sebastian, Cody, it would be crazy. Right. So I could just tap and hold, tap rename, and name it I Download Blog Chat. Right, or work. <laughs> work chat, yeah. yeah. That's cool. That's really cool. And that's really handy just to get some context to what, like if you're just quickly swiping through all your messages, it allows you to quickly um, gain an idea as to what this is. What am I looking at? Right. Solid tweet. And huge if Message you have tweet. multiple of those. Let's say you have multiple group conversations running. And, right. And that's usually what I find myself having. Right. So, yeah. Super handy. It is a, a free jailbreak tweak on Cydia's Big Boss repo. Nice. Now, there is another one that we'll be posting. Uh, it's called Uninstall Application Size. And this tweak gives you a... when you Put your device in a wiggle mode. You hit the X button to uninstall an app. It'll actually tell you how much space you're going to save prior to deleting that app. Very cool. That's really cool. Yeah, that is cool because you see people that, uh, like I see sometimes I look at the, when you plug your device into iTunes and it says this much is used for music, this much space is used for other, and you're wondering what that other is. Well, this will help you kind of get an idea of how much space you're actually freeing up. Yeah, this and especially if you like have an eight gigabyte iPhone four or iPhone four S or sixteen even, gigabyte, even sixteen gig. Yeah, I have a sixteen gig now, and I will probably never get one again just because I'm now constantly running out of space. Yeah, so you can even just you don't even have to delete the apps. You can just hit the X to kind of check all right how much space is this app taking. Right, and that way you know um, you can delete it if necessary. Awesome tweak. Uninstall application size is its name. You can find it for free on Cydia's Big Boss repo. And I think that's pretty much it. Kind of a slow. Yeah. Well, slow. like you said, you've got a couple. You've got a couple in the pipeline that should come out within what? Maybe by this afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have. Some. And by the time this airs. Oh yeah. I didn't out. even think about that. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. Interesting week. Uh, it's kind of just. There's a storm brewing. It's the September 10th. Same summer. here. Gonna... Same here. You got that weird, you got that feeling that it's going to be a huge fall for Apple news. And then anytime it's a big time for Apple news, jailbreak news always follows. Yeah. So I'm excited. 
Yes, definitely. So do we have any questions this week? Oh, let's talk jailbreak questions. Actually, yeah, I saw quite a few on here that I thought were interesting. So hopefully we can get to a couple of these. The, okay, we got to address this because I've seen this at, asked a couple of times now. And we talked about it last week and I don't think much has changed. But on this unthreaded jailbreak thing, I see it four <laughs> or five times just in the top bunch of these questions I'm looking at. So we have to address it. I know you tried reaching out to them. Um, you actually talked to them for a little bit on Twitter. And what did you get from that? Oh, uh, I, I think they're actually working on something. I don't know. Really? I don't know. I mean, I think, I don't know. I can't say for sure, but um, I had a decent conversation with them. I don't know who it is behind the Twitter account. You know, I'm just kind of, you know, playing along. I got just you. Fun. Is it, okay, <laughs> I have to ask, in your conversation, was it all hashtags and broken <laughs> broken words or was it normal everyday language let me go back let me look right now i'm looking at it that's a pretty long conversation though. we've had quite a few chats um <laughs> yeah it was quite a few broken wor words uh. but it's like that thing you know have you ever seen that like that mind thing where it has like a sentence and like all the letters are kind of scrambled but you can still make the sentence out yes you know what i'm talking about yeah it's like try to read this yeah, it's one of those test things that kind of messes, right. messes with your mind or your eyes, and you're like, "Well, I can't read that." But then once you start, your mind automatically yeah. puts it all together. Yeah, and that's basically it's almost like uh, it's almost like one of those. Yeah, <laughs> I just think it's I don't know. Well, here's I have something. A weird sense of humor. Yeah, here's something interesting. They said there was somebody on controlling their Twitter account over the weekend that was talking normal. It wasn't talking in that weird. I think it was Adam Ins Insul or I don't know. Okay, you saw it too then. I but he was it. like, I'm their translator. I don't know. I feel like this whole thing's just a big show or we're getting trolled or something. <laughs> Some people think it might be Posix Ninja from the Chronic Dev team fame. Uh, because I know he tweeted out on his account this weekend as well that they are um that they're real, that they're really working on something. If I had to say, like if I had to pick someone. Like someone said, you pick this person, pick someone, or I'm going to break your MacBook or something. <laughs> That'd be a weird <laughs> circumstance to be in. I'm not going to lie. Do it, Jeff, or your MacBook gets it. <laughs> I would say it's uh, Pasta Ninja, too. Yeah. It's, a, I don't, I guess we'll just, it's another one of those wait and see kind of things. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because we, we need some, we need some spice. Yeah. In the, in the jailbreak community lately. It's, we haven't had our Ionic, uh, any arguments with him and it's just getting kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> so they're kind of mixing it up. Yeah. We need, need somebody to mix it up. Well, let's hope that this doesn't turn out to be another elevator. You remember that the whole uh, elevator jailbreak thing with Ionic? He said he, he posted a bunch of pictures of elevators and acted like he was going to release a jailbreak tweak called elevator. <laughs> and it obviously never panned out. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. I know, I know there's a, um, someone had a question about the uh, iOS 7 and with um, Apple Care or something like that. Oh, the warranty issue. That? That's right. Somebody said, if I install an iOS 7 beta on my phone, does that void my warranty? I think we have different views on this or different experiences, don't we? Yeah. Because, uh, okay, well, you tell yours first and then I'll tell mine. Um, well, my wife actually had an uh, iOS 7 on her iPad mini and she took it in because somehow... Don't ask me how, but the the entire iPad was like warped. It was like literally bent, like curved, curved and bent. But the glass was bent with it. It was the weirdest thing. And the um, you know, the aluminum on the back was bent. It wasn't like a like a crease. It was just like a curve. It was almost like it was designed that way. It was so weird. That but, is um, weird. And it just happened, or has it been like this? <laughs> And it just we just woke up one day and it was like that. I don't know how it happened. Wow, that is weird. <laughs> it was very weird. So we took it in the Apple Store. Uh, make a long story short, and it was running iOS seven. The guy's like, "Oh, I see you have iOS seven and he swapped it out. No questions asked. Wow. So he noticed that she was running a beta. Right. Okay. See, I have a very different experience to share. I have a buddy down in Texas who um, had iOS seven installed on his iPhone five and. He's been having mic problems. He was having mic problems before he installed iOS 7. Why he didn't get it taken care of before he installed it, I have no idea. But uh, he finally um, took it into an Apple store uh, this past weekend. 
and tried to get somebody to you know look at it. It's having a mic issue where if you put it on speakerphone, it doesn't work. And then even when it's not on speakerphone, sometimes it cuts in and out. So it's definitely a hardware issue, it sounds like. And uh, they took one look at it, saw that he had iOS 7 a beta software, they called it, and said that they couldn't help him. They couldn't. They didn't ask to see if he was a developer. They didn't ask really any more questions. They said, you know, this beta software could have done something to your phone and we can't take care of it. So very different experience than what it sounds like your wife, the treatment your wife got. Yeah, well... I mean, I can kind of understand that, I, you know. I can. It's like, yeah, I can kind of understand it too. Yeah, it's it's not like they said, "All right, your warranty's voided." Yeah, they just said we can't work on it while there's a beta. Right, and if you it have could a beta, be that then, problem causing it. Exactly, and if you have a beta, then you should know how to not have a beta. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Well, generally, and you have you put this great tutorial on how to downgrade from iOS seven to iOS six, didn't you? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a so, while. It's been a while since the first iOS 7 was released, so. Right. But you can downgrade. You should be able to point iTunes to an old version of iOS 6.1.2. I think he's having problems, though. It might be some... All you need to do, really, is just, um, you know, just open up your your um, iTunes. Right. And put your device in a DFU mode, click restore, and it restores it. Huh. Yeah, for some reason just, his isn't restoring like that. I've had to, I've been trying to help him, but it's it's not going very DF, far. DFU isn't working. Right. Well, no, it goes into DFU mode, but when he tries to just click restore, it uh, the uh, it says cannot restore da 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 error message. Weird. Yeah, it is weird. Huh. So, anyways, yeah, I just did it this morning. Actually, I had an iPhone four that I was running iOS seven, and I just put it back on six. Oh, okay. Point. Yeah. So he's just inept, I guess. I don't know. But uh, it sounds like there's different, it's case-by-case case scenario almost, so you're kind of taking a risk if you put iOS 7 on and try to take it into an Apple store. Right. I would recommend right. downgrading, if possible. Downgrade your handset before you take it in, just to Absolutely, alleviate yeah. any kind of, you know, get ahead of any kind of problems that may occur. Especially if it's like an, uh, a, what may be a software issue, like with in my wife's instance, it was obviously, it was bit. I mean, you didn't have to go into any settings to check to see if something in iOS 7 bent the device. Right. It's just physical. But if you have some kind of thing where it could possibly be software related, then you probably want to make sure you downgrade it first. Exactly. Good advice. Have any other questions? Um, it looks like just one just popped across here that we were kind of just touching on earlier, so we might as well answer it quick. It says, do you think Apple will ever implement quick reply like by SMS? I'm assuming he means in iOS 7. Um, yeah, iOS uh, 7.1. You think so? iOS 7.1 will see a quick reply. Ooh, that's a pretty, <laughs> that's a pretty confident prediction. Doesn't Apple always release like some like sort of yeah, semi-big feature, feature with point one? Yeah, I'm trying to think of what was in 6.1, honestly. I think Siri was able to do, uh, buy movie tickets through Fandango in 6.1. Like yeah. But you're right. I know, what was it? 4.3 was a big up. It's kind of weird, but yeah, any point <laughs> something um, in iOS, there's a chance there could be big features in it. Right. So, uh, I mean, that literally is the main thing we need, a uh, quick reply. And that's what a lot of people are calling for. Interesting to me is that they added quick reply in OS X Mavericks. Right. You can actually quick reply to, correct me if I'm wrong, text messages, iMessages, yep. and what else? Um, you can re quick reply to iMessages, and um, you can do uh, Twitter. Uh, they have Quick Compose for Twitter, I believe, um, and Facebook messages too. Yeah, so that's I think that works that way. I'm looking at it right now, and I, I just see the uh, Quick Compose buttons. But I think you can quick reply. At least I know the messages. I know you can do that. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's weird. I wonder what's stopping them from doing an iOS seven. Maybe they want to save that for a seven point one feature. Or maybe it's just not something that's been implemented in iOS seven yet, or that we've seen in the betas. Maybe we'll see it in the fall. I guess you. I guess you never know. Well, I guess we'll have to find out. <laughs> find out this yeah. fall. I'm looking forward to that. So, um, I think that pretty much covers everything. Yes. Kind of a, a kind of a packed show as far as news and stuff. Yeah, um, huge show for news, and then some really cool updates to jailbreak tweaks. Yeah. 
So we, we encourage you guys, again, if you are listening to this, if you haven't already, go to iDownload blog. Um, you can go to the uh, Let's Talk Jailbreak uh, tag on iDownload blog. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast because you can you can go on the post. Uh, you, you'll see that post on IDB. You can subscribe to the podcast. Also, make sure you send questions to hashtag Let's Talk Jailbreak yeah. on Twitter. We always save time at the end of the show to try to answer them. So it's cool when there's some good questions like right. there was today. Yeah. You know, I think uh, I think Sebastian's back in town, didn't he? He is? I think so. I think he got back into the U.S. this weekend. So we may see him on Let's Talk Jailbreak next week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you, <laughs> the, French, the Frenchman returns. And I bet he has well, all okay. kinds of stories about France. Oh, man. I can only imagine. <laughs> so. Oh, man. Definitely yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. Yeah, definitely tune in next week. Um, obviously, we're going to continue to have more news as the iPhone event gets closer. Just a lot of exciting times coming up. Absolutely. Thank you again, Cody, for joining me. Uh, it's been a pleasure. I don't know if this will be the last time we just do our, you know, our show together, but uh, it's been really awesome having you on. And uh, I'm sure, obviously, you'll be on again. Yeah, I'd love to come back as a guest. Huge honor to come on this show. I know it reaches a uh, <laughs> I know it reaches a huge audience. You guys would be surprised at how many people tune in every week. Um, super cool to be on the show. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Um, and yeah, well, definitely. Who knows? It may just be a, a, what is that, a trio now. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, cool. I'm looking forward to it, man. All right, man. Talk to you later. Peace.